Let's talk today about how the Montreal Canadiens got screwed by the world, pretty much. The circumstances that we have in which have put us in this position where the NHL is on pause, where the draft is uncertain, where the restarting of the season is uncertain. It's all come together to put the Montreal Canadiens in a very unfortunate spot, and one that... Had they known was going to happen, they probably would have done a few other things to get themselves out of this position, because the way things are right now, the potential for the Canadians and Mark Bergevin to be legitimately screwed by the world does exist. Let's take a look at Arpan Basu's article here on The Athletic, why a June draft would foil the Canadians' ability to put the reset in overdrive. Now, this is The Athletic. It's paid for content, so I'm not going to take anything from this article exactly, but I'll leave a link in the description to that down below. But what we are going to take a look at is Spectre's Hockey's article talking about this article. Yeah, it's an article that Lyle Richardson wrote about Arpon Basu's article. We're reading the article here on this YouTube video, but Spectre's Hockey is a free, publicly accessible news resource that anybody can read, so I'll take a look at this one instead. Also, it's much more condensed than the full athletic article. Let's take a look at Spectre's Hockey from May 7th, 2020, where Lyle Richardson talks about what Arpon Basu is saying in his article here. The latest on the Montreal Canadiens. Arpan Basu believes holding the NHL draft before resuming the season throws a monkey wrench into Montreal Canadiens general manager Mark Bergevin's efforts to retool his roster. Under a normal draft, Bergevin could peddle those picks to cap-strapped clubs looking to shed salary. The Canadians have 14 picks in this year's NHL entry draft and had 21 in the last two years. That's a lot. They face having 35 prospects enter the system, pushing them very close to the league maximum of 50 players under contract in a given season. Now that is a problem. But at face value, you may be saying, okay, how exactly is that a problem? Sure, the Canadians have a lot of draft picks. Why is that a bad thing? Well, it's a bad thing because there is indeed a limit as to how many players a team can have under contract. With so many draft picks this season, and so many draft picks in the past few seasons, take a look this year and the last two years, 14 plus 21, you add them together, you have 35 prospects. You have 50 players that you're allowed to have signed. That's NHL players, that's AHL players, and that is also the prospects. This team is in a position where they could very well have upwards of 60, 65 players that need to be signed or need to be under contract or are under contract, and they're going to be forced to turn some of them away because they just simply have too many players. That's the problem with having too many draft picks, although at the same time having a lot of draft picks is a very, very nice looking thing on the surface. It's just what Arpan Basu is relating to is the idea that if the draft happened after the playoffs, Bergevin could say, hey, Vancouver Canucks, you guys are in a cap crunch, right? Let us offer you a few of our third round picks to take on somebody who is very valuable to your organization, a guy who may be somewhat of an okay player for you, but who does indeed have that high dollar amount. You could use the money, right? You need to re-sign your guys, right? Well, give your expensive player to us, and we'll give you some of these draft picks that we accumulated over the years. When it comes to the Montreal Canadiens, they know how to get draft picks. Remember that Marco Scandella thing? They acquired him for a fourth, and they traded him for a fourth and a second. Remember Ilya Kovalchuk, where they signed him out of nothing, and they traded him for a third? Mark Bergevin is so smart when it comes to being able to accumulate draft picks, and it's at a point where now things could be a little bit wonky. 
if the draft was normal, the playoffs were finished up, and teams were willing to shed salary to get money to re-sign their players come July 1st, that's where Bergevin swoops in and gets some good players in the process. However, because the draft will probably be in June, before the playoffs restart, it kinda puts Bergevin in a weird spot where he can't trade those draft picks anymore because teams that are strapped for cap are gonna say, no, no, we don't want to trade our valuable guys because we have a playoff run that we're suiting up for. Sure, a guy like, I don't know, X player does take up a lot of money and we would much rather have that money than have him. But if we want to go into the playoffs, well, there's no benefit in getting rid of this player now isn't there. So, Mark Bergevin honestly kinda got screwed here. At least, that's the idea that Arpon Bessu is laying out. If the NHL goes along with a draft that goes before the season restarting, that goes before the playoffs coming into effect, and that goes before the salary cap reset and the amnesty buyouts and the re-signing period, we haven't even talked about those amnesty buyouts. If those buyouts do come into play, then Mark Bergevin's plan to take advantage of teams strapped for cap is gonna be nothing. These teams don't need to shed away some players for cap anymore because they're just gonna have amnesty buyouts to do that for them. This is the ultimate worst case scenario, and it's only going to happen if this draft goes along the way it plans, and if amnesty buyouts are a thing. Let's go back over to Spectre's Hockey, take a look at what Spectre himself, well, it's Spectre's note here, but it's just Lyle Richardson, he calls himself Spectre. It's not Mark Spectre, by the way, not from Sportsnet. Like most observers, I believe Mark Bergevin loaded up with draft picks in this year's draft to use some of them as trade bait to bolster his roster for next season. Those deals won't be possible if the draft is held before the season resumes in July unless the league allows for a second trade deadline. Now that's really interesting. Bergevin could use the prospects he selects as trade candidates, but draft picks tend to be more attractive than prospects in the trade market. That's pretty true, not gonna lie. A 7th round pick is more valuable than a player who was selected in the 7th round. That's just how it goes. And if the NHL is gonna put in a second trade deadline, then that could be really, really interesting. If the Montreal Canadiens are able to get players that some would deem to be steals, maybe they can trade those players for actual roster caliber pieces. But at the same time, you have the fan base's point of view, oh my goodness, you're trading away the prospects. And that's going to happen in a situation like this. It's inevitable. But there's a difference between trading draft picks themselves and trading the actual named players, because... If you're going to select a whole bunch of guys in rounds two and three, what are the odds that all of them don't make an NHL impact? It's probably low. Let's say you have five or six players selected in the second and third round combined. The odds of all of them being busts and playing zero NHL games, honestly, I think it's kind of low. So... If a time comes in, let's say, five or six years, where Habs fans look back at the 2020 draft and they say, oh my goodness, the Habs drafted this guy, that guy, and the other guy, and they're all great now, all of a sudden that paints Mark Bergevin in a pretty bad picture, because oh my goodness, you got rid of guys who eventually became great. Sure, the short-term rewards could have been a little bit better, but at the same time, there's always the what-if factor. What if they kept this prospect, and what if they didn't trade him away and he became as good as he is today with the Habs instead of this other team that he was traded to all those years ago. But I think all of these ideas coming together is just an illustration of how terribly managed this situation was when you're taking a look at the perspective of how the world came to where it is now. Mark Bergevin is not at fault here. He had a plan and his plan honestly looked to be working up until this whole thing started and the NHL shut down. If the NHL did not shut down, I think Mark Bergevin probably would have gotten his way a little bit more and probably would have successfully found a way to add some more pieces. But the unfortunate circumstances of the world today has led to the Canadiens and Mark Bergevin's ultimate plan here being completely screwed up. And 
We know that there was a plan for sure. They were talking about it. Bergevin and Julien were saying, don't worry, we have a plan a few months ago, and that was a very highly coveted topic. But comment down below what you think about this weird idea here. Do you agree that the Canadians ultimately have been screwed? Why or why not? I hope you enjoyed this video search of that trust 99. And bye.